It set, says recording. It is? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, what a crazy show. Excellent. Um, so, David, I forgot. Oh, David Wood. I was going to say, I forgot your last name. I'm here with David Wood. And David um, and I have known each other online for some time. Um, and David, you got, you've got like an interesting, uh, some kind of like interesting story, which I don't know if I completely understand, but um, one of the things that's always interesting me is you've got, and this is not related to our topic of discussion today, really, but you've had an interest in this writer called Idris Shah, who's a famous Sufi thinker, guru, I'm not really sure what he is. And um, you've been involved in that for a long time. And because of your interest in that, I read a few of his things and he, and, and sort of read a little bit about, not much admittedly, but, but maybe enough to get a vibe of what's going on there. And it was, uh, it was a really interesting um, exploration of a whole different way of uh, explo exploring consciousness, I guess. Yes. And the reason I'm bringing it up is because what we're gonna talk about today um, doesn't seem to me at first like it's related to that. Um, but uh, but that does seem to have formed like quite a big part of your thinking over the years, the whole stuff from Idris Shah. Yes, it, it has. Uh, Idris Shah was a, uh, Sufi, uh, he was a Sufi. He, he died in 1996. Um, he was a modernizer of uh, the literature. He brought uh, ancient texts uh, forward to today's world. Uh, all of uh, Sufi uh, activity is designed for the people and place and time that they live and operate in. And times change, people change, cultures change, and the Sufis adapt their methods uh, to those people, place, and time. And Idris Shah uh, adapted ancient Sufi text for the Western man. Uh, and for the Western man that was not particularly religious or had disconnected from the direct experiential experience of what a, a, uh, 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 religions are. And so he was, uh, he modernized that for the Western man so that the Western man could access um, more directly the, what the Sufis try to bring forward. But um, the, the tradition as it is known is being modernized yet again. And it is being brought forward in a, uh, a non religious context. And, uh, and that's primarily because a language has been developed in this current that can help explain that <laughs> to humanity. <laughs> and that's, but the, the name is almost unimportant. The, the, the connection to truth consciousness is one way to express it is what's paramount. And what's important is that someone develop a direct connection with it. It's not something that can be intellectualized. Um, it's only something that can be experienced and it directly relates your point of reference is always yourself. And that's what's missed uh, uh, by most people, they always try to relate it to, well, this is Plato's cave, <laughs> for example, and, or they relate it to Hinduism, and I am that, which you and I both know and love, uh, but 
really it's it's seeing the operation of this material in your life and and have a direct experience of the truth of that so you maintain your flexibility and your openness and so that you can not be run by programs <laughs> is the modern way of expressing it uh idris shah would say conditioning we are conditioned to uh, uh, behave a certain way. We are conditioned by our culture. We are conditioned by our religions. And the modern way that KSP talks about it is through programming. We're, we're kind of programmed. <laughs> and uh, the, we're programmed by our thoughts and our beliefs. And, and those programs limit our ability to experience a greater reality. And that's the important thing. Both of them speak about essentially the same thing. They just use a different terminology and technology or technology uh, is the same. Technology so you is think, the same. You think they're actually talking about the same kind of thing then, yeah? That's a, yeah. just a different. Yeah. It, it, <clears throat> it's, 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 let's put it this way. From my perspective, yes, they are, uh, but that's up to you to experience and understand. And some people don't, and really to take advantage of this, you don't need to try to figure it out. <laughs> you just yeah. need to go through and experience it. Let's, let's move back a little bit because a lot of sure. people are not gonna know what we're talking about here. You said KSP and... Um... <laughs> well, the reason the reason I invited you on here is because uh, David's uh, started a new Facebook group, which is called Revolution it? in Human Becoming. And like I went on to his group and I was uh, looking at some of the quotes and stuff he was putting on. It all seemed pretty uh, interesting. And because like I know of like your deep interest and all the Sufi stuff, I thought, you know, this might be really interesting to see what's going on there. Um, but I didn't really know anything about it. Now, what it seems to be about is based on the writings by a certain gentleman named Caleb Seth Pearl. Caleb Seth Pearl, who's written four or five books, apparently, um, about um, about what, David? <laughs> <laughs> well, he he talks about their uh, he his first book is, is uh, a tyranny. Uh, against human consciousness. And the book describes how there is a group of controllers that exist on this earth that want to limit the normal human being's perception of reality. And they're trying to do it for their own nefarious reasons, which is basically to maintain control. And that control gives them power and they enjoy the power and the benefits that come with that power. But it doesn't take much to see this in operation uh, in the world. And now, these, these controllers, these are like, um, these are phys physical human being controllers or something else? Yes, or? but yes, and they're also, but they also have a non-physical component to them, you know. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's, there are physical, there are beings, human beings that are physical that misuse their, um, their powers to subjugate humanity and take your choice <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a panoply yeah. a panoply yeah. of them to choose from right uh, well you know but they're, they're the the institutions are pretty well known uh for example religion is is one of the the institutions and um there's also um education and there's business you know, um, and if you look to the U.S. politics, you can see it, it's thinly veiled that corporations and, and oligarchies are running the political show. 
the Congress is, on both sides, Democrat and Republican, are owned by and sing to the tune of major corporations and, and the, the powers behind those corporations. And it's, it's thinly veiled. You, you really don't have to look very yeah. far. And in the media, the media at times tries to seek to divide people, to distract people from uh, this. And to get a sense of how powerful the, these oligarchies are, in 2008, there was a financial crash. And it was this, this uh, crash was the direct result of financial malfeasance and fraud. And it is, it's, it's extremely well documented that th there was a significant amount of fraud that was in open view, yet the Obama administration, who I, as a liberal Democrat, <laughs> uh, supported, <laughs> um, did not prosecute a single fraud case. Yeah, it's and neither did and, and 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 neither did Trump. And the re one has to ask oneself, why is that? And. The reason is, is the powers that be, the controllers didn't want that. And the, the, the honestly, the, the powers that be do not truly care who's in, in the White House. And they don't care who uh, controls the Senate. They already have this, their game figured out. They already have their players influence, player, players involved. And, they do it. And the same thing exists in media where there's outright lies that exist or they, they, the other thing is they just don't really truly report on what is significant in the news about what's going on. And they emphasize the division that exists in America as opposed to, and in the world, and they, they focus on tragedies as opposed to what's really truly going on. Anyway. No, one of the things that's interesting is that the way you're talking is, I mean, this is, it sounds like the sort of social issues, like we common, we might commonly talk about like over a cup of coffee, but the other, um, hey, lift up your cup again. Lift up your cup. My Yeti? It's the same one. Yeah. Well, it's not yet. It's a different mark, different brand. But wow. I I, 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 I have a Yeti. And then I also have something called Fire and Ice. And it's exactly the same cup. And and I love it because it keeps my water cool. It's the best cup ever. I found this in Peru. It's, I, it's never left my side since. It keeps my I know. cup hot all day. It's unbelievable. Anyway, what I was going to say is um when we discuss these problems the controllers the um the pluto the plutocratic stuff that's going on it's the kind of stuff we might talk over a cup of coffee but the interesting thing about um pearl's book caleb's book the first one which i haven't read really but i've skimmed through quite a bit of it and um it seems to me that it's it's talking more about a spiritual thing it is Rather than social. Well, here's the thing is, is that you have to recognize that your uh, here. Hang on. Just saying, I got to get back to a, a No worries, man. A, I'm in a meeting. <laughs> uh, someone pops in and, 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 and a, a client says, hey, look. <laughs> I'm in a meeting. <laughs> um, I, I noticed this from the standpoint of those are outward forms, but they also they they penetrate down to the personal level. And uh, the important aspect of this is that you recognize 
how you you your opinions, thoughts, and beliefs are being manipulated. And that affects your reality, the reality that you can create. And um, it, it has a spiritual flavor. And that's very true. It is spiritual. But we oftentimes misunderstand what is spiritual. The, the whole purpose of a, spiritual, a spirituality is to gain personal freedom. And personal freedom to live a life bigger than the range dictated by your beliefs, by what someone else wants you to do. So it's a very practical philosophy. That's the one thing that appealed to me about Sufism is it, it was a very practical philosophy. The whole idea, woo, hey, let's go out and dance with God and the almighty. And, and no, it's about you being free of all of your own uh, things that hold you back. So it's, it's deeply personal. And what, what, what imprisons me is not the same thing that imprisons you. And, but they all share certain characteristics. And so the, the whole purpose of any sort of, the true purpose of a religious system is to gain freedom so that you can perceive more. The name of the game in any sort of uh, real spiritual process is to gain perspective, to perceive more, to be aware of more. And your beliefs limit your ability to see your thoughts and feelings limit your ability to perceive your cultural paradigms about what's good and bad limit your perceptions to, to, to perceive what's really going on. And think of it this way, human, the human eye can only see so much of a bandwidth of light. We know that there's ultraviolet on one side and infrared on the other side of the little itty bitty band that he, the human eye can see. Same thing with frequencies, the ear. The ear can only hear so many hertz and the range is really kind of narrow. But there are bands of, of frequencies that, that exist, of sound that exists that we cannot perceive. And the, the whole purpose of all of this particular program, whether you're talking the Sufi or you're talking the modern incarnation with Khalib Seth Pearl is to expand the range of, of what you can perceive. And you do that by being aware of the things that limit your perception, whether they're a beliefs that are propagated by the media whether there are beliefs that are uh, propagated and limited by the government that, that goes on and says you can do this and can't do that, whether they're propagated by economic hardships <laughs> created by corporations designed to suppress people <laughs> and force you to buy product. You know, like for example, surveillance capitalism is a great example of how Facebook, unbeknownst to you, captures your attention. That what, what, what surveillance capitalism does is it captures your attention and it directs you, unknown to you, to, a, to buy something at a, a particular shop that you're walking by. And so what do you do? How do you combat this? You turn off location services <laughs> with your Facebook app, you know, that's on your phone. Maybe you even take your Facebook app off of your phone. And, and so you can't be tracked that way. All of these situations where you are being, your freedoms are being robbed from you without you even being aware of it. And, you know, so that something like, uh, I can't remember, it, it, the name of the book was Surveillance Capitalism. And it talks about how modern corporations are, are basically 
stealing your attention, stealing data from you and, and manipulating you. And that's robbing you of your freedom. And if, you're, if you can perceive that, if you are aware of that, you can move through the life more easier. Now, is that spiritual? <laughs> yeah. It's practical. And, but what it is, is it's about in creating your reality. And, but there, there's a whole series of things how we are all trying to, uh, governments, corporations, and these things have a constant attempt to limit what we can perceive and what we can do. And, and we are the ranges of what we can perceive and what we can do are being limited. And mainly they're designed to disconnect us from ourself. From, and <coughs> like, for example, the, the idea of a soul doesn't exist in, in, in modern culture. <clears throat> the idea, or if it does exist, is being perverted and it's being limited and it's being um, sold, sold back to you <laughs> in a glossy format. You know, like you know, it's Abraham. Interesting. I'm, uh, I'm reading another book at the moment called Prometheus and Atlas, who mm -hmm. is by this guy called uh, Jason Rezi Giorgiani, who I've been talking about a lot lately. Yeah, and that guy. That guy is such a genius. He's challenging in so many ways. But the main thesis of that book, which sort of ties into what you're saying here, because you're saying that you know the the sort of soul's been lost and the spirituality has been sort of been lost. What he's his hypothesis in that book is that actually science, which is that's the big thing now. You know, you've got to believe in science. You can't have your own personal views if it doesn't align with science. And what his point in that book is generally is that science is actually a spiritual force, uh, but it's pretending that it's not a spiritual force. And because of because of that, that it's it's almost impossible to come to terms with it because we're actually not dealing with the reality of what it is. And he's he he documents this and proves it and just really is very, very persuasive what he does. It's, it's astonishing. Um and it's, um, what did I want to say about that? I just think it's, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's, it seems like it's slightly off topic at the moment, but it's an interesting sort of uh, parallel because we have this tendency to think of, um, to think of these um, controllers and, and, and these, uh, these ideas and these institutions as sort of being counter to spirituality. But in fact, they are they are deeply entrenched in a sort of spirit in their own. It's it's a sort of um, veiled that the, the the spiritual aspect of them has been veiled. It's like the dark aspect has been veiled, so we can actually approach them. And I wonder, like going back to Caleb here, is is like going through his um, his book the uh, tyranny against human consciousness it does seem to me that he's uh, he doesn't really identify it that way like it's a spiritual force he's really a dead but he does sort of uh, well here's he here's the thing he that slightly, he uses language which sort of identifies it is like it's a, like it's a negative force which is sort of attacking us well is that, is that accurate no okay I, it, it, it's <laughs> it's one could take that particular view okay. and 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 here's the thing that i like about caleb seth pearl he's he does not do what i did you know he does not go quite as specific as i i have in terms of saying that corporations are trying to do it he says you got to go out and find this on your own and you got to experience and see what is going on. And the reason that he does that is because he's speaking to a much wider audience, whether you're someone living in India or someone living in China or someone living in the United States, the way that I do, and how that particular uh, 
control mechanism manifests is slightly different in every place. And so if you're in Saudi Arabia, well, the main controlling aspect is, is Islam. And uh, if you're in Israel, it's Judaism. And if you're in uh, the United States, it's corporate, you know? So the, how certain thing, and if it's in China, it's political <laughs> because the communist party controls everything. So how these things manifest vary from person to person. And it's your responsibility as an individual citizen of this world to recognize how it manifests in your particular locality. So he doesn't name names the way that I did. Uh, and the, so that, that's, that's an important What's his aspect. technique? It's like I was going through his book and I was, I was he, he talks about this, about identifying what you're saying, whatever is around you. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I'm confused about his technique about how you, um, how you escape, it almost seems like what he's saying is like, if you can just identify, it's enough to identify it. If you put yourself into the vibration of identification of the opposing forces, that's enough. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It, it, it really is to a great extent. That is simply enough uh, is to be aware. Awareness starts to change everything, but it's, but, but it's very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about this with a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, th this friend was saying that love and, and truth are the most important thing that exists in this world. And I don't deny the, the, the importance of love. I'm not saying that love and truth are not important. But... <laughs> What if you can't perceive love when it's acting? What if you can't perceive truth when it exists in front of you? Uh, to to a, 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 a nine-month-old child or a one-year-old child who wants to go out in, in a busy street and play in traffic, and when its mother and comes and grabs that child out of the street to pull it out of the street, the the child thinks that the mother is being mean and cruel and doesn't love her at all because that child wants to play in the street. It's cool. It's fun out here. I want to play in the street. And so the child perceives the mother's love as mean and cruel and blah. <laughs> well, the, the child's perceptions are limited. And they, they depend to a certain extent on perspective. There's an old saying that I know you're familiar with. And, and that is uh, to someone who's not prepared, an angel's face can appear like a devil. And it, it's simply you have, it's simply someone that lacks a certain level of awareness and, and, and the ability to perceive. So, from my particular perception or, or point of view, perception is important. Awareness is important and primary. And as you start to grow your awareness and your ability to perceive, you're, you're widening your perspective. Um, <clears throat> this is a strange thing. I'm, I'm going to quote from the Bible. There, there was a, it was popular a number of years ago here in America. <laughs> America is very uh, materialistic. It's a very materialistic country. And they found a Bible quote, and it was, and it was from the Old Testament. It said, God increase my territory <laughs> and everybody there became this small cult around it as they th these groups got together and they repeated this quote from the bible about increasing your territory and what they and they they took that quote to mean increase your wealth increase make me richer dear god make me richer and 
they totally misunderstood and misperceived what and what the importance of that quote was. By territory, they mean what you can see, what you can perceive. So the Bible quote was not to increase your wealth. It was to increase your ability to perceive and see reality. <laughs> and it was a total perversion of the mesh method, a meth message uh, in the Bible. And it's been co-opted for greedy means. And that's kind of the, the problem with, with people is they cannot perceive and, and controllers work to limit your ability to perceive things and they distract you. Another good analogy that, that is used in the tyranny against human consciousness is the magician. The magi as the magician is pulling the rabbit out of the hat, you're looking at this hand, but you can't see what this hand is doing. <laughs> that's hidden, <laughs> okay? And that's, it, it's a misdirection of attention. And that exists in surveillance capitalism. You know, <laughs> we're, 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 we're making you, we're doing you a favor here by, by making things easier for you, but ignore the fact that we're directing it to our clients so our clients can make money in the hope that you're going to spend money at their store. Uh, we, we, this is a benefit for you, but ignore the fact that it's a benefit for this and that's how we make money, you know, um, so it again, it's a misdirection of perception, and perception is paramount. Uh, so it seems like like it's it's an interesting perspective because the whole idea that like awareness is enough to break the structures. It's interesting because one of the things which is not related to this, I do a lot of meditation on energy and elements, and one of the things that I teach people, I guess, is I tell them that just becoming aware of the elemental structure of consciousness is enough to balance it. You don't actually have to do anything with it. Just becoming aware of it is enough. And it's almost like the double slit experiment. You know, it's like uh, mm -hmm. the quantum physics thing. It's like once you, if you actually look at it and become aware of it, it actually, the structure changes. But you wonder in like a system like as dynamic as um, politics and the political level, if that's enough, you know, it always seems like that you would need uh, like a, a sort of equal and opposing force. Now, my thing, which I've been saying for a while, is that um, uh, you're you're missing. I, I, I hate to stop you there, uh, yeah. and and I'll let you continue. Recognize that this is always deeply personal. It's not as none KSP does not want you to go out and start marching against and and start a political movement. It doesn't want you to do any of that this is a personal thing. It's, it's up to you to maintain awareness. And because you are aware, you can move through life. However you choose, to, you can move through life. You can make personal choices. So it's about restoring to the human being personal freedoms. Gotcha. And and as it relates to consciousness, and, and I'll share with you a particular story about me, me, you know that I did Vipassana, right? You and you're a big fan of Vipassana. Well, I spend a tremendous amount of time uh, in Vipassana where you place all of your awareness in your body. And I get activated all the time at three in the morning or even in my normal meditation time. And I feel the upset in my body. I can't name it. I can't say that it's because, oh, Sam cheated me uh, across the street, or, you know, my boss isn't giving me work, or um, uh, I had a fight with my wife, whatever. I can't name the upset, but I'm a, I can feel the upset in my body. And as I continue to keep my awareness in my body, I can feel the upset and whatever it is, the disturbance in the force <laughs> dissipate. It starts to even out. And suddenly I'm even 
all the way through. And that, that disturbance uh, goes through. And then I, then I maintain that awareness on that smoothness. And that becomes a center for me. And I, 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 I cannot tell you how many times I've been activated at three in the morning and suddenly my whole body is humming. And I go, huh, why is this happening? And then six hours later in the middle of my workday, something, my world blows up. <laughs> but, but somehow I managed to navigate through it so my body consciousness was aware that this was coming. Yeah. It, it was saying, hey, look, this is going to be coming. This is a, a, a stability upgrade. We're going to plug you into the, to, the, to the universe of consciousness where everything's good. You're plugged in. You're getting, you're, you're getting gassed up with stability. <laughs> and, and next thing you know, when the world blows up on me, I go, oh, okay. And I, I navigate through it fairly well. Well, this is a similar sort of thing when you have a certain level of awareness. Oh, this is what's going on. This is, oh, okay. Well, I know where I'm at now. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fight anything. Uh, I recognize that the politicians are trying to uh, cut taxes for the rich, their rich patrons, you know, <laughs> just, and I'm screwed. That's okay, because I can go this way, and I'll be fine. And I can navigate my business a particular way, and, and I, I will be fine. And I can step out of the way of the train. And, you know, I, I can make a choice. I can move to Chile and, uh, and, and get out of all of this shit, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it has its advantages. Um, a question though, like when you're doing that, like on the, um, it's really interesting what you're saying about like your meditational experience. Uh, on the level of Kath Sela Pearl, who doesn't tell us how to do it, but just to, to find our own zone our own vibrational zone in which to investigate i'm interested in what you think about this and i you know i'm going to make comparisons to other stuff and i know that's not what you want to do with this but um but sometimes it's helpful for other people to understand it you know like maybe what yeah. what's going on and also for me too so um so for example um becoming aware what we've said here is that becoming aware of the problem uh, can be enough to dissipate the problem but um, this is interesting. Like th this book I'm reading really is, 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 is informing a lot of my thoughts these days. So I'm going to try and address it again in a more intelligible way. Um, one of the things that Georgiani says in his book, because I think it's, while it's a different book than Kill of Seth Pearl, they seem to be talking about the same thing from slightly different angles. And what he's saying is he's saying that, um, that, um, that yes, there's controllers, things are being controlled. But he thinks that the control is actually occurring because it's, it's occurring at a much deeper level than the surface level. So we might look at things like the political situation in education and say, okay, I'm going to become aware of this or whatever is its manifestation in my life to come to terms with it. Um, or uh, on the really deep level, what Georgiani thinks is he thinks that this is actually um, that the whole of science and technology is the uh, is the demonic possession by the Promethean archetype in our society, which is a really deep idea. But what I'm wondering is, reading Georgiani, I was thinking, wow, how do we get rid of that? If that's what it is, and he makes a compelling argument that it is that, then how do you get rid of that? Is it is it just becoming aware of it? And if I don't know if you're following me here, but if like technology and these uh, plutocratic, the, the, the corporations trying to own us, if that's just the sort of tip of the iceberg of what the problem is, is it enough for us just to be aware of the tip of the iceberg? Does that, will that create enough change or should we be trying to look deeper or, or maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe we should just be looking at like, um, at well, what, our perception the, shows us. 
Well, the the thing is, is that uh, the, you can only see as deep and, and act as deep as you can perceive. Okay. All right. So if you're, as, as Einstein would say, the problems are always solved at the a level above where you're at. <laughs> right. And, and, and so if you're, <laughs> if you're trying to solve these problems, you have to uh, move to the next level. You have to perceive to the next level. So it starts with you as an individual. And what I'm trying to do in this particular group that uh, I'm doing online, in which anyone is, is welcome to check me out on Facebook. And we'll put the link they're below the video so people can see yeah. And if they're interested in joining our readings on, on Friday, they can. I can send them a link to a Zoom meeting. They can read along and they can follow. And, and um, so it starts with a personal thing. And then the, as the group becomes more aware of this, as, as the, the group becomes aware, we create a field. And we create a field around this particular material. And then what ends up happening, and, and people don't even don't recognize how this operates, but as you change, the world around you changes automatically. Okay. So as you and I create this field around this material on our Friday meetings, you're going to be changing the world in Chile and I'm going to be changing the world in Los Angeles because our perceptions are changing. And just, I, I've slept with the same woman for 40 years and it's amazing how just sleeping in the same bed and sharing the same space and the energy, she picks up on my things and I pick up on hers. And we don't, and most of this picking up is not done through talking. It's simply the proximity and the sharing of a field that we have created. And the same thing applies in, in this group. When we create a field around this material, when we all tune in to what this material is, and the consciousness that exists around this field we will change the world. It can't help but happen. Why? Because our perceptions change. And when our perceptions change, the world changes. And uh, for example, several of people have read the, the, um, the material from the book already. And they come back and they read it. And what they're some people think that they're trying to memorize the book. The purpose of reading a book again is to memorize the book and to, to, to get reacquainted and so that you can remember it more. But that's not really the purpose of reading a book for a second time. The purpose of reading a book for a second time is to observe how you have changed, how the reading the book the first time impacted you and how you started to change to see the world differently. And as you got, left the book after the first reading and you went out into the world and you started to experience the world, you started to notice, oh, this is what the book's talking about. It's talking about this. Oh, that's how it manifests and works in my world. That's interesting. So you go back and read the book again. And you notice those changes, you're observing yourself, how you have changed. And then you can go deeper into the material and then you can come out a second time and you can go out in the world and you go, oh, well, I noticed this and this and this and this. And suddenly you start to perceive more changes. And then you go back and read it maybe a third, fourth time. I've read a, a certain book called The Observing Self six times. <laughs> and it is, I, I did it over like a six or seven year period. And 
it's absolutely amazing how much I, I observed myself changing <laughs> after each reading. Really? Uh, and what you, what you again do is you're increasing your perception, your field of perception, or as the Bible would say, increasing my territory. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, and that's, that's the whole goal, you know, and if you think about it, ayahuasca why do people go to ayahuasca they sit down there and they go my world has come like this and i'm in a prison i know i'm in a prison and i can't i can't i gotta get out of my prison and they go to ayahuasca boom <laughs> the prison disappears they, they sit down there and go oh shit fuck <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know <laughs> scares the shit out of them <laughs> but uh suddenly their whole ability to perceive has been um, changed and they, they recognize that they have escaped from their perceptual prison that they didn't even really truly know. But there's more to it. The, 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 the next phase is to integrate those changes. Where did the, who, who, how did that prison get created? How did you place yourself into that prison? Whose prison is it? Is it your parents? You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <laughs> I grew up taking drugs bad. Whoa, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you really <laughs> taking LSD will fry your brain, you know? <laughs> and, and all of that was designed to scare the shit out of you. And was it true? No, it was an outright lie. Our government lied to us about the use of LSD. It wouldn't fry your brain, you know? Uh, so anyway, the, oftentimes we are being manipulated. And why? They want to narrow our perception. They want to control what we're perceiving. They want to control what we believe. And you have to be aware of how uh, those are being done to you. you. Yeah, taking ayahuasca helps, but that's not necessarily going to, to help you unless you understand where did this belief come from? Why am I angry all the time? <laughs> you know, This is why people have problems integrating the ayahuasca experience because they have these boom, but they yeah. still haven't figured these, these fundamental questions out, right? That's right. You know, they, they, they don't know how to integrate it. And part of it is, is uh, and, and again, part of it's part of the control program because they don't know how to integrate it. They don't know the body connection. We, we, we have severed that, uh, you know, and it started 300 years ago with Descartes. I think, therefore I am, you know. Descartes. Yeah, Descartes totally screwed up. He totally destroyed our connection to our body. I am, therefore I think. Yeah. And, but I also do a lot of other shit. <laughs> Can I just, just, just interrupt you for two seconds. Descartes yeah. is who Georgiani pinpoints in his book as where the first problem started. Amazingly. Yeah. Funny you yeah. bring him up. Yeah. Yeah, Descartes was is perhaps the most insidious uh, thing that that I think. Therefore, I am. It's actually the reverse, and what it did was, right. yeah, it put the mind primary as opposed to being. Yep. I am is all about being. Yep, and this is the the name of my. Uh, Facebook group is revolution in human becoming. Okay. And the whole purpose is to become the whole purpose is to be. So what we do is, is we examine all the things that move us away from being and becoming what we are supposed to be and what we are. And to re restore ourselves, to restore humanity to its rightful place. And so you, would say that, you would say that your being is already established 
but it's been covered up by other stuff. Yes, exactly. It's, it's being limited. Our being is limited. Every time we place a belief on us, you know, sex before marriage is bad. Okay. Eh, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I guess if you're 14, maybe it is bad. <laughs> but if you're 26, maybe it's not. I, you know, do you think something, something going on here? Um, you know, I, 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 I just think that um, uh, oftentimes I'm not, I'm not espousing a particular set of beliefs or, or anything for anyone. Everyone has a right to develop their own particular thing that works for them. And that's what's important for me is that people um, restore themselves and, and base their own philosophy, not on what some holy book says, not on what some guru says, but on what works practical for them. And to recognize you may, you may adopt the belief that sex before marriage is bad. And that's fine for you if it works for you. Um, you know, and, and that's good. That's, that's not the thing. The thing is, is as long as it's not imposed upon you by something else that has an ulterior motive, you know, um, so anyway. What do you think, um, Caleb Seth Pearl, does he think he doesn't, I, he doesn't mention this in the first book, I don't think, but, uh, what, it is his view on like things like uh, God, for example. Now, clearly, he believes in awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I'm thinking about this like in terms of like, the Sufis too, or, like, because I don't know much about it, but like, mm -hmm. does that, um, like, in, in looking for what's practical in your life? That seems like a sort of practical thing, which might help you in your individual life. But like, what is the, why, why bother? Why bother? Is it, is it trying to get back to some sort of purity or some, or is, it, is it trying to? Um... Well, I think the I think the big thing is to recognize how reality works. Okay. Um, and to understand how reality works when when we're um caleb does a much better job than than i will but um and and i point you incidentally caleb has written five books so far okay and the first three deal with a revolution in human becoming the next two are basically own your own sovereignty and own your own reality. Own your sovereignty and own your reality. And the, it starts talking in, in these books about how you create your reality. And once you recognize that, how reality is created, by creating a resonance. And your resonance actually brings stuff to you. It's not like, oh, I gotta go out and go to work to die. You know, your work is in creating a resonance and things start to appear in your life that didn't appear before. And also things start to fall away from your life. Things just kind of disappear. Um, I, I shouldn't use this as an example, but well, actually I will use it and I will change the names to <laughs> protect the innocent. <laughs> uh, uh, I have a person that I know who is uh, um, close to me and, and he's, he's been slightly jealous of me my entire life. And he, he's slightly angry and, and, but somehow, and we, we were always very competitive, you know, there was this back and forth and competitiveness. And I had to prove that I was right and he had to prove that he was right. And so there was this incredibly competitive relationship. And finally, I just got to the point where 
I'm letting all this go. I, it, it's fruitless. There, there, there's no point to it. <laughs> and, and so I let it go. And sometimes he, this person, he's still, he's still part of my life. I can't, I can't totally get rid of him uh, for, for reasons that will <laughs> remain uh, quiet behind the scenes. I can't, but we occasionally interact and he says some things are pretty nasty. And the funny thing is, I literally do not hear the nasty things that he says. He's, he says them. And, and I, all I hear is, bah, 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 you know, I literally, and I, I kind of get the sense that he was saying smack about me, but I, I kind of like, I, I, I can't hear this. I don't process it. And my reality has changed so much that it's like water off of a duck's back. It doesn't impact me. And I don't engage him with it. I don't fight back. Why? There's no reason to. I literally didn't hear it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so the, that's what starts to happen is, is your reality starts to change and, and you're no longer fighting with people that you used to fight with because you you're not tuning in. You're not tuning into the same stuff anymore. So by yeah, you I'm not tuning in to, to, to his right. smack. And and be, why? Because I resonate differently. My resonance has changed and I don't pick up on those signals anymore and they don't impact me. And um, so that's one of the things that starts to happen. The other thing is you start to attract other energy into your life and suddenly other things start to show up in your life that, that were totally you, you were always kind of out of reach for you and next thing you know they're they are in reach they just they walk into your door right you know and so those that it, it become creating your reality becomes a, a an observation and how am i resonating <laughs> am i resonating anger <laughs> right. because whatever you resonate with you create more of, like for example, I used to be an uh, uh, an angry liberal Democrat, <laughs> upset with the Republican corporate mongers, all oh, those bastards, <laughs> and and it was absolutely amazing how my life was absolutely filled with uh, filled with that, and I decided last year that I had to let that go. It's not that I'm, I, I think that the Republicans are suddenly angels, you know, I don't, but I'm, uh, I'm also not blind to the, to the um, stupidity of the liberal Democrats that I supposedly support and espouse because there's a huge amount of stupidity and, and it's like, really, you just said that, come on, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. I don't resonate with either one at this particular point. And it's why my resonance has changed. I am, I, I recognize that both are being put against and, and the, the problem is, is that when you're constantly aware of the divisions, you don't see the unity. Um, it, we're, it, <laughs> Uh, I can't remember how Hindu philosophy, yin and yang, the yin and yang symbol, you know? Yep. Um, well, that's a duality. But inside of that also is a unity. <laughs> yep. there, there's a unity in good and bad. <coughs> and, and there's a benefit to destruction. Destru destruction in, in uh, Hindu philosophy is, is part of creation. <laughs> you have to take down what, what exists so the new stuff can come back up, you know? And, and so uh, you start to recognize that particular positive uh, polarities are actually a unity. And 
that starts to, to really change your resonance. You start to recognize and see the unity in all these seemingly opposite things. Uh, you see the sameness in them and you see their connection. And suddenly the world um, resonates totally differently. It's interesting, you know, it's almost like, uh, um, it's almost like a law of manifestation kind of thing. And um, just like the, and I, it's an interesting thing though, but what Caleb's saying then is that um, becoming conscious of the way we're controlled, uh, becoming aware of the um, of the unity, I guess, or of the or of a different having a different perspective rather than the one that we're fed, and being aware of that is enough for us to sort of disintegrate the structures of control, which might which are actually partially self created because we're so focused on them, and our energy of focus is what sort of creates the glue, right? It creates the glue to the um, to the problem. Yeah. So this right. is what you're going to be doing in your group, right? And yeah. so I'm um, getting for a while. So let's uh, let's just uh, the uh, the book is called um... Tyranny Against Human Consciousness, and it's by, by Caleb, Caleb Seth, Pearl. Seth Pearl, and you can get them on Amazon. And it's the first book of a series of five books. Uh, the second book is Welcome to the Machine. The third book is Operation Human Freedom. The fourth book is Own Your Sovereignty. And the fifth book is Own Your Reality. And in our group, we're going to be going through, um, I, I have Zoom meetings and we're going to read the book. And I read it out loud. I read two chapters a week and then we discuss the book. Uh, the meetings usually take about an hour and a half or so, and we're and if there becomes too big, we'll probably split it and do a second group. Uh, but we'll we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. And but uh, that's it. As you go through this material, and you'll go through it several times you'll read it yourself on your own and then you will read it uh, in the meeting you'll start to observe how your awareness changes and again it's all personal you know what what one person is aware of and what one one person's prison <laughs> is different for each person has their own prison <laughs> and they're going to have to find their way out of their own particular prison for certain people it could be an eating addiction god knows you know uh you know who who knows what it is um some people it could be i had a good friend of mine who who said you know i was really addicted to this political turmoil and just going through and reading this material has changed my whole outlook relating to uh politics. I'm letting go of this war between the Republicans and the Democrats. And so he recognizes it's just not productive. And suddenly that frees up a lot of energy and attention that he didn't have. And, and he can devote that to things that start to matter in his life. You know, anyway. I think it's a really valuable um uh, project. So um, I'll put the link and stuff below the video. If people are interested, they can log on, check it out. I think it's really interesting. And it's, uh, it's kind of like a simple, simple sort of uh, reality, which might yeah. have some really big outputs if people are dedicated, you know? Yeah, it will. So um, yeah, it will. Yeah. It'll help people so a th lot. Thanks. To, thanks for coming on, Dave. Um, and Thank you. Um, it was, a, it was a pretty good chat. I mean, we should yeah. do it again sometime. If you if we have another good if we have another good thing to talk about, it'd be a good laugh. <laughs> well, I I'd love to come back. I I always I, I admire all of your work with ayahuasca magic. Uh, I've followed you for years there. 
Uh, and so I, I'm a huge fan of you, Scott, and I appreciate you taking the time to uh, uh, share what I'm, I'm doing over at uh, Revolution and Human Becoming. So thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Take care.